Hello everyone, how are you doing? Is it Michaela here? I've been doing a few projects, working on some things, I'm actually doing an alarm clock. Uh, I want to build an alarm clock that's better than my phone, uh, and I'm starting to work on that right now. It's kind of super exciting. But the reason you're here is because probably of the title, because you want to stop being a slave to your phone. I get it. I found this trick out a little bit almost by accident, but also just because I figured it was crazy and simple enough to just try. And it's worked like a charm for me. I've gone from scrolling incessantly through Twitter, through Facebook, through all my social media, almost constantly throughout the day to checking it for maybe five to 10 minutes uh, before bed or after work and then just turning it off and, and never looking at it. I haven't logged into my Twitter in days. And I'm so happy. This is like, this is like the happiest I've been in months, honestly. And I have news apps downloaded, so I'm still up to date on current events, which makes me a little sad. But I'm not like addicted. I'm not, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. The trick is to delete your apps from your home screen, but not uninstall them. Just take them off your home screen so you have to dig through your apps in your phone's library to actually access them. That's the trick. Now, the rest of this video will tell you why it works. If you don't care about that, you can click off. But if not, it's some pretty cool science. I've been trying to do some research to figure out why this trick worked so well. Well, you, when you take an app off your home screen, what you're really doing is making it harder to access. So you're increasing the inconvenience of the task. Our brains, when we go through life, are cons constantly analyzing things between convenience and reward. Cost-benefit. This analysis, this cost-benefit analysis, is being done for almost every action that we take. And the reason for this is literally programmed in our biology. And it has to do with our propensity for laziness. And yeah, humans, humans are lazy. That's, that's, that's what it is. We don't want to spend energy. We want to spend as little energy in our lives as we possibly can. And there was a good reason for that. When we were cave people, early humans, our goal was to survive. If you want to survive, you can't be spending a ton of energy on your morning jog and then not have enough energy to actually get food for yourself for the next week. Conservation of energy was so important, and in an environment like nature, where calories were few and far between, that was very difficult, and it served us very well. We have not evolved fast enough for this modern age, is basically what's going on, and we need all, every trick that we can get to deal with this new environment that we have been placed in. This phenomenon was actually explored in a really cool book called Nudge by, by Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein, where they looked at all of the different areas in our modern world that were kind of pushing us towards one direction or the other. A great example is in organ donors. So in the US, one third of citizens are organ donors, but in Austria, over 99% of people are organ donors. Is the reason that Americans are just intrinsically less wanting to give organs to the needy after we die? I, maybe, actually maybe, that, that might be it. But, but if we think about the systems that are in place. In America, you have to opt into the organ donor system. In Austria, you have to opt out. The organ donation is a default. Making it a default instead of an opt-in has catastrophically increased the number of people that keep the organ donor option for no other reason than the fact that we're just lazy. I mean, we see this with voting too. Countries that automatically enroll you to vote when you're 18 have a much higher voting registration rate than countries that don't. So, looping it back around to the phone, what did we do? By taking it off our home screen, but not deleting the app, we have retained our autonomy and our freedom by not deactivating our accounts or placing a hard restriction but we've made it more inconvenient. We made it harder to actually access these apps. And that little nudge away from just having it on our home screen to use is exactly what the doctor ordered to get us to stop looking at our phones. Once we're on a social media app, it's very difficult to actually get off of it. But if we don't get on it, that's where the money is. Well, money, not money for them, but, but metaphorical money for us, our time. That's where 
moving on. Now, before I go, I just wanted to introduce some caveats and things to look out for. So when I first did this, I experienced the dramatic drop in my app usage, but I also found that because I was so addicted to scrolling, I actually found other apps to scroll through to replace the addiction that I had to the first app that I took away. In the couple of days after taking Twitter and Facebook and all those apps off of my home screen, I found myself scrolling through LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I was addicted to LinkedIn. The other technique I've learned to really help active, enjoyable use of social media is to only go on social media on your desktop or your laptop if you have them. So those are some of the techniques that I've picked up. Just like in the book Nudge, our brains are very, very susceptible to addiction, both through convenience and through chemicals. So we need to find all of the tricks we can to break those addictions. I hope that this works for you. And if it does, please leave a comment letting me know that it does. If you have any more questions, please ask. Comments are free reign. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I love this channel and I'll be posting more cool inventions and science-y things and just stuff from my life. I uh, can't wait to do more stuff with it. So I hope this trick helped and I will talk to you all next time.